Welcome to Blue Blue's Artwork channel. I am Okwemi Richard Sinowebo and I'm super excited to have you here today. So today I will be talking about the second element of art and that is shapes. <laughs> interesting, inspiring, and educative content on my channel. Awesome! Do you know that for everything you see, there is a shape? So you wonder what shape is, right? Okay, shape is a form of an object, like that basic look of an object. So if you see a football, you see circle, right? If you see a watermelon, you see circle. If you see a fridge, you see rectangle, right? So that first shape, that first outline, that look you see, that thing you see about that object is the shape. Now, number two, shape is a flat area surrounded by edges or an outline. So remember what I just said now. You see a fridge, you see a rectangle. So we're not saying the, the original look of the fridge is a rectangle. But what we are saying that the basic look of that fridge is a rectangle. So what is the outline of that fridge? It is a rectangle, right? So I'll give you another example for this. So another example is a pyramid. Now when you see a pyramid, the first thing you see is a triangle. That's why for children, they don't forget about the pyramid on time. Why? Because it's a unique, it's a unique object with a unique shape. We all know that triangle is one of the unique shapes we have. So now when children see a pyramid, the first thing they see is that basic look of the pyramid and that is the triangle. Awesome, right? Good. So now, shapes can be classified into two. So what that simply means is that we have two basic classes of shapes and that is geometric shapes and biomorphic shapes. So I'll get to it. Okay, so now number one is geometric shapes, like I said. These are shapes that are precise, they are regular, they, they are basic, they have specific sizes, they have regular sizes, constant sizes. So when you see a triangle, no matter how big or how small the triangle is, it has a constant look. There's a way a triangle has to look. There's a way a square has to look. So these shapes have regular sizes. And these shapes are square, rectangles, triangles, diamond, oval, cross, and so on. So always remember that any shape that has a constant, precise, regular look or size is a geometric shape. Don't ever forget that. Is a geometric shape. And these shapes are mostly found in man-made objects. Objects like houses, cars, tables, chairs. Just think of that man-made object. So I'll give you an example. For cars, the wheels of the bus goes round and round, round and round. Do you know why children like wheels? Because the first thing they see in the wheels is circle. Yes, circle. So when you see this man-made object, you see shapes. You find these regular shapes, these geometric shapes in man-made objects. So I go to the second class of shapes, and that is the biomorphic shapes. So you wonder, right? I know in your mind right now, what you'll be thinking is, what does she mean by biomorphic? Okay, I'll get to it. Now, biomorphic is made up of two words, and that is bio and morph. Now, bio means life. Remember, biology, huh? study of life, right? So, bio means life, and morph means form. So, what biomorphic simply means is life form. So, biomorphic shapes 
are shapes that are related to nature natural things so what that what this simply means is that biomorphic shapes are found in nature they and remember i said geometric shapes are regular right now for biomorphic shapes they are irregular remember because they are found in nature is there anything that is made by god that you see that has that you, you can say you want to put ruler or they are the same i don't think i've ever seen a leaf like you see like five leaves and they are exactly the same no they're not but when you see square a square is a square all squares must have all their sides equal yes one might be bigger than the other but there's a constant look and that is the fact that all sides must be equal but this is not so for biomorphic shapes why because they are found in nature and these shapes may look like leaves animals insects plants clouds and so on so you can see that biomorphic are unique so we can see that shapes are in two major classes and remember these are geometric shapes and biomorphic shapes and another name for them is for geometric shapes is regular shapes and biomorphic, biomorphic shapes irregular shapes so you can also say shapes is in two types regular shapes and irregular shapes so as you're looking at me i bet you're wondering are shapes as important as lines yes they are shapes are also as important as lines remember shape is the second element of art okay yes we know for you to create a shape you join lines together so for example i think i mentioned that earlier you have a vertical line and an an horizontal line now when you put this together you tend to form a square or you tend to form a rectangle now another example is circular lines when you put circular lines together you form oval shape you form circle and so on so now we can see that lines lines joined together are used to form shapes so shapes are important creative has the help to create interesting drawings patterns designs ideas in fact even paintings yes and also another thing shapes help creatives to do is to add balance to a design we are still going to come to that that is under principles of art so balance is one key thing every creative has to put into consideration when creating a design and shape is one of the elements of art that helps to bring this principle into light awesome right quite interesting do you know that shapes play key roles in the learning in the learning process of children too <laughs> you wonder right okay i will explain that so it has been proven that children learning shapes are able to put together visual information so i will explain that so now what that means is that for example you are teaching a particular child about circular things or you're teaching about you or you're teaching a child about um round objects now you want this child to know this round object definitely you want this child to be able to identify this object and also know their names so now we, we, we you introduce this child to the shape circle yes circle now you tell the child circle and these are the things that you you find a circle in watermelon orange why do you think children are able to correlate with orange easily why because when they see it they just shout circle it's a circle why because and it's also one of the things i think why babies like balls it just keys apart from the fact that they are able to you know have fun with their um psychomotor and the rest but still he still keys because that shape they see that shape at that age shape is very key to them so now when this when you when this child when this particular child you're introducing these shapes to see these objects 
He is able to like register. He is able to to remember that oh, this object is this. Why? Because the child has been the child has been taught the shape that is seen in those objects. Do you understand? So the child is able to relate. The child is able to recognize this object. You can see how important shapes is also in children. Another part is that shape also help children to learn to learn skills in different areas of learning like math, art, phonics, writing, reading, and so on. So for example, now before a child learns to write, the first thing the child learns, the child learns to do is play with lines. So you wonder how that is, right? Okay, I'll get to it now. Scribbling. When you give a baby pencil, now the first thing the child does is, is scribbles. It scribbles. Remember, scribbling, circular lines, right? Awesome. So the child scribbles, scribbles. When you look at it, it's like the child is making spiral lines, is making circular lines, curved lines, and so on. So the child does scribbles. Then from that level, the child gets to the level of understanding the use of precise lines. That is where the child is trying to draw stroke and dash. Dash and curve. Curve and curve. Now, at this level, the child understands the use of precise lines and is making simple, simple, simple forms of letters or numbers. Now, when it gets to a particular level where the child is meant to learn to sound, the child is meant to write precise numbers and letters properly. So now this is where shape comes in. Now the child has learned to use stroke, curve, dash, slant, and the rest. So now, the next thing is, the teacher now uses shapes of letters and numbers to make the child remember how to put these letters together and how to sound these letters. So for example, the teacher is teaching the sound S and the letter S. So now, for the sound S, we know that the best and the, in fact, the most popular um, object used is the snake, the animal snake. Why? Because the sound of the animal is s, and the animal actually has the form of s, has that can form that shape s. So when you when the child teacher is teaching the child, it's like you know, just try to remember the the snake. Now you can see my hand, I'm forming that shape. Snake, S letter S. So anytime the child is trying to write that letter, trying to create the sound of that letter, the child, it just keys. The child remembers the shape and is able to correlate, is able to relate, is able to put together the sound is able to put together the writing of the letter. So you can see how wonderful shape is as an element of art. It is not only applicable to designing, drawing, patterning, and the rest. In fact, it's applicable to learning generally, which also will make me mention that's one of the factors of art I mentioned way at the beginning in one of my lessons, which is the fact that it's a universal language. It's a subject that is applicable to all other subjects. It helps us to understand all other subjects. So shape is one element of art that has proven that, right? Awesome. So we can say that just like lines, shapes also play important roles in art and creativity. So what part of shapes do you find most interesting? Is it the classes of the shape? Is it the classes of shapes or the importance of shapes? Please don't hesitate to drop that in the comment section. And if you have more functions of shapes, please don't hesitate to drop that as well. It's really important and it will be very nice if you can have a discussion on it. 
thank you so very much for always coming back to my channel i hope my content remains inspiring educative and interesting and if you do find it that way please don't forget to give a thumbs up and don't forget to share i'm looking forward to seeing you next time till then bye